Hello, Bobby Torres of Frightbox Recording here to show you how to mix heavy guitar tracks within Reaper. Now in this tutorial, not only am I gonna show you how to mix guitars within Reaper, but I'm only going to use the stock plugins that come with Reaper. So in order to achieve the results that I'm achieving in this video, all you need is Reaper. No third-party plugins at all. Now, if you like what you hear in this video, you could download this exact Reaper session that comes with the files that I'm using in this tutorial. I will leave a link below right within the video description so you can download the files and practice at home. Again, the download comes with the exact session I'm using along with all of the plugin settings and the files that I'm using in this tutorial. So again, you could download it. There's a link below right within this video's description. So now if you've ever seen any of my videos, you know I'm a huge proponent for technique and workflows over gear. Because in my opinion, these days, gear matters very little. It's all about how you use the gear, not the gear itself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the sample back and then I'm going to dissect piece by piece exactly how I'm achieving this heavy guitar tone within this sample using only the stock plugins that come with Reaper. Let's check out the sample. Okay, so in my opinion, that is not a bad heavy guitar mix at all. And again, I'm only using the stock plugins that come with Reaper. So let's dive deep and see exactly how I'm achieving this guitar tone right within Reaper. Let's get to it. Okay, so if you notice here, I have a few tracks. This first track is actually a stem of my drums and bass track. And the only processing that's happening on this stem is just a simple EQ. Again, it's just a stock EQ that comes with Reaper. I just have a low shell filter applied that's attenuating all of the frequencies below 200 Hertz. I felt like there was a little bit too much sub happening in the kick drum. So I just wanted to attenuate those frequencies so I had extra headroom on my master bus. But drums and bass are not what this video is about. This video is about guitar mixing. So let's get to the guitar tracks. Okay, so if you notice here, I have four orange tracks. I have one that's called 5150L, Guitar DI L, 5150 Right, and Guitar DI Right. Even though it's four guitar tracks, I'm only using two of them. The reason why is two of the tracks are an amp tone and two of the tracks are just DI tracks that are not being used in the mix at all. I always track DIs for editing and also for reamping. Now, if you're wondering why I would track guitar DIs for editing, the reason is very simple. If you look here, you can clearly see transient information on the DI tracks that you cannot see on the amp tracks. So if you record a DI with your amp tracks, you can simply group your tracks and edit them together and you can use your guitar DIs as references because they're much cleaner and easier on the eye when you edit. But again, even though they are in my mix, they're completely zeroed out as you can see and they're not being used in my guitar mix at all. But my amp tones are. Now the next thing that I want to point out is that I have no processing on my guitar tracks themselves. And the reason why is all of the processing that's happening on my guitar tracks are happening on a guitar submix. And this red track right here is my guitar submix. And in Reaper, I'm using the folder track system where I'm creating a folder that all of my guitar tracks are being sent to. Now the great thing about Reaper is you can easily create a submix by creating a new track, placing it above all of the tracks that you want to submix, and just clicking the a little plus icon that will instantly route all of the tracks sitting below that specific track through it and it will act as a submix. And that is what I've done in this example. So again, these four tracks are being sent to this track here and I named this track Guitar Submix. Now, yes, the DIs are being fed through it, but the DIs are zeroed out and are not being used in the mix at all. So the magic that's really happening in this mix is happening on my Guitar Submix. And my 5150 on the left is set to zero dB. My 5150 on the right is set to zero dB and they're hard panned left and right. Those are the only mix related elements that are happening on my guitar tracks themselves. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna bypass the plugins that I have on my guitar submix and let's take a listen to what my guitar tracks sound like in solo. <laughs> Okay, they're not bad, but they need a little bit of work. In my opinion, they're just a little muddy sounding and a lot of the palm muting is just a little out of control. So the first thing that I've applied 
on my guitar submix is a simple EQ. And again, I'm using the Rea EQ, which is the stock EQ that comes with Reaper. So if you look here, I'm using four of the bands. And the cool thing about this particular plugin is you can add additional bands if you wish. I think this is a great feature, especially considering that this is a stock plugin that comes free with the program. But nonetheless, the first thing I have is I have a high pass filter that's rolling off everything below 80 Hertz. I'm doing this so the guitars do not conflict with my kick drum and my bass guitar. Band number four is a low pass filter and I'm rolling off everything above 10K because all of those air frequencies that exist within a guitar track do not necessarily need to be there because they're gonna clash with the cymbals and a lot of the times the top end of a vocal track. So in this case, I'm just rolling off everything above 10K. Now, in my opinion, there was a little bit too much of a buildup in the lower mids. So I'm pulling out a little bit at around 390 Hertz as well as a little bit of lower mids at around 700 Hertz as well as a little bit more low mids at 865 Hertz. So nothing earth shattering, but in my opinion, these simple EQ tweaks make a massive difference on my guitar tone. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna play the guitars back with this plugin engaged, and I'm gonna intermittently bypass the plugin so you hear how much of an effect it has on my guitar sound. So as you can tell, it really does help clean up my guitar sound. It's getting rid of the frequencies in the low end that we don't need, as well as the frequencies in the top end that we don't need, and all of that additional mud that's happening in the low mids that again, we just don't need. And just as a reminder, if you download this template, you will have these settings at your disposal so you could practice at home. Now this takes care of the overall tonal balance of our guitars, but what about those palm mutes? Now we all know in metal, there's a ton of palm mutes that usually happen within guitar tracks. And these palm mutes can really make the speakers jump and can also conflict with the low end of your mix. So now compression usually helps dynamic range. But the problem is, is that if you use a normal compressor, it's gonna affect all of the frequencies within your guitar tracks. So you'll end up hearing the compression on your guitar tracks. Now this is not necessarily a bad thing. Maybe this is an artistic choice, but for me, I want my guitar tracks to sound as natural and transparent as possible. This is where multi-band compression really comes into play. And the great thing about Reaper is that it comes with a free multi-band compressor. Now as a Pro Tools user, I'm extremely jealous because at the time of this taping, Pro Tools does not come with a free multi-band compressor. You have to buy one. But with Reaper, it's free. So in this case, I'm using the Rhea X Comp. Now let's take a look at my settings here. Now, a few important things here. If you notice, there are four bands that you can play with. And again, just like the EQ, you can add additional bands if you need them. But in this case, I'm only using one band. I'm only controlling a very specific frequency range just so I can catch those palm mutes. So my band one, which is everything below 100 Hertz is completely bypassed, I'm not using it. My band three, which is my mid range, not using that as well. And band number four, which is everything above 6K, I'm not using that as well. So the only range I'm really working with here is the range between 100 Hertz and 250 Hertz. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna play the audio back and let's take a listen to how this multiband compressor is affecting my guitar tracks. I'm also gonna intermittently bypass the plugin so you can hear the effect that it's happening on my guitar sound. Let's check it out. So if you notice, it's cleaning up my guitar sound in a very subtle way. What it's doing is it's controlling the palm mutes and not letting them get muffly or out of control. So I'm gonna play it again once more and I want you to pay close attention to the range around here. There's a little meter that demonstrates the amount of gain reduction that's taking place within the compressor. This is important. So when I play it again, pay attention to this. Let's check it out. So if you notice when I played the audio back, you saw numbers like negative 2.9, negative four. What this represents is the amount of gain reduction that's taking place within the plugin. So what this multiband compressor is doing is only controlling that specified range of 100 Hertz to 250 Hertz 
within my guitar tone. What's great about this is that we don't perceive it as compression because it's only happening on a very small frequency range. The frequency range that's usually out of control with the palm mutes. So when it comes to palm mutes on guitars, I love multiband compressors because again, they can control the palm mutes without it being audible to the listener. And as far as processing, in order to achieve the guitar sound that I've achieved in this example, that's it. Just the right amount of EQ matched with the right type of compression is all I needed to achieve the guitar tone that I wanted in this mix. And again, I'm only using the stock plugins that come with Reaper, which is awesome. These days, all you need is a basic interface and a DAW, and you could achieve amazing sounding productions right within your home studio. Now, if you're not a Reaper user, I have great news for you. It's only $60. And not only is it $60, but you can download it and try it out for absolutely free. So if you're looking for a DAW or you're thinking about Reaper, download it and give it a shot. You have nothing to lose. It's definitely worth it. Okay, so with all of that being said, let's listen to the final mix and see what we have. Again, for results that I'm getting for absolutely free, you can't beat it. And just as a reminder, you could download this Reaper session for absolutely free. You'll have the settings that I'm using in the video along with the exact audio files. There's a link below right within the video's description. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. You can both like and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links are in the description below. Till next time, happy mixing.